What's up, people? Um, what's up, people that might be watching this? I don't know who this is going to be going to, but I hope that uh, some students can watch this and maybe get some experience, strength, or hope on uh, on studying abroad and maybe, you know, realize I do want to do this. I don't want to do this. I'm going to be promoting it a lot probably because I really enjoyed my experience in getting to study abroad to Italy through Columbia State and Tennessee Consortium of International Studies. Um, I got to do a lot of fun things. I got to bring back ceramics. This is a this is the Contradas of Siena. Siena is made up of 17 di different districts and each one of them has a coat of arms and a little symbol and the symbol can be like a snail or a eagle and there's a lot of really awesome stuff. Um, but in general, getting to study abroad is just a life-changing and awesome experience, and I highly recommend it for everybody. So I personally think that I learn stuff on every aspect of living. I don't know the best way to word that, but on all fronts of my life, I learned something social, uh, emotional, physical, spiritual, um, cultural, just everything, you know, psychological. It just, I learned a lot and especially my program had 37 people. And the great thing about studying abroad through your community college, which mine is Columbia State, um, yours probably is too if you're watching this. But the great thing about that is TENSIS, Tennessee Consortium of International Studies, which I will refer to it as TENSIS um, from now on. But since you're doing it through that, it's all of the community colleges and when I got to the airport, I got to meet half of my pro over half of my program. Half of us flew from Knoxville and then half of us flew, well, over half of us flew from Nashville. There was a small group, I think it was 12 that flew from Knoxville. So I got to meet most of my people in Nashville and I'd never met them before. I think there were five people, including me, that were from Columbia State. And so that was really cool because I kind of had some common ground there. There was one person that was even at uh, a... a ceremony that I went to for Columbia State and she got an award and she's a, she's super cool. She's going to Lipscomb. But it's really interesting getting to uh, have shared experiences. I wrote a little bit about this and it's something that I'm still, I think I'll forever kind of be able to feel is this shared experience that I got to have. Um, so I took social psychology when I was there under Sharon Grigsby, Miss Doc, and um, I got to see her the other day in her office and we had this awesome conversation that really energized me just because it's like we had this shared experience and I will forever be able to talk about anybody that went on that trip. I'll be able to talk about Italy and that trip and all the things that I loved and enjoyed and felt like just nourished and taught me so much. So the shared experience part is really cool. And I not only get to do that with people from the program, but also people like my mother or my language teacher from high school who have been to Italy, or even people that have just been to Europe. And I get to talk to them about uh, traveling internationally and going to Europe and all the history and stuff. And so it's a really interesting um, effect that it has on all of your life. Um, I'm getting a job currently and I was able to talk about my study abroad experience and, you know, kind of impress the people a little bit in the fact of like, yeah, I, I displayed the responsibility to, you know, sign up for these scholarships and to write for them and to be consistent and uh, perseverant so that I could get the program, get into the program and then get the scholarships get the passport and then study internationally and learn those things. So it not only does it give you a, a level of like, oh, you know, this person, you know, I get some, you can kind of get some respect because it's like, wow, that takes some dedication to do that. But then it's also, I got to have, you know, all these different awesome conversations with people because like, you know, they're like, oh, I got to go to Ireland this year. Or I got to go to Italy this year. And um, you know, anytime that somebody has come up to me and been like, I got to study abroad, it's like I'm, I've been able to talk to them for at least an hour. I could talk to them all day, all night. There's somebody that I was talking to not too long ago, um, and she went on a separate trip with a school out of Mississippi, 
but she was in some of the exact same places that we were. And I was like, oh, Rio Rigamero, like I've been there. Um, so I really think that there's, there's really very little cons to studying abroad. It's mostly pros. Um, obviously there are some things like physical exhaustion, mental exhaustion, emotional exhaustion, but the really great thing is you get to learn more about yourself. For me, I got to learn, okay, I have to stop and take a nap. I am physically exhausted and I am also emotionally and mentally exhausted because of that. I can't give any more socially. Uh, I'm an extrovert and there were times in Rome, especially our first city that we went to was Rome. And so we were walking, you know, five to 10 miles a day, maybe more, maybe less and standing a lot and going through these museums. And this is, at, I'm, I'm in the midst of, you know, getting to know 37 different people, not all at once, but, you know, a couple people here a day, you know, two, I'd hang out with two during a museum and then a different group after the museum or something like that. So it's interesting how your energy is going out physically and then mentally from, you know, trying to get to know these people. And there were days that I was like, I just had to focus on the bare minimum of like existence of like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm one of my good friends from the program. His name is Casey. And I, the, there was one day that I went to bed about two cause I had some stuff to do. And then I woke up about six so that we could go on a Wednesday to get blessed by the Pope. Some girls wanted to do that. I wanted to do it as well. Cause it's a, you know, once in a lifetime experience maybe. Um, so I only got about four hours that night and I was completely exhausted. And I was like, Casey, this is the plan. We're going to go back. We're going to get lunch. We're going to take a nap. And if I don't do that, I'm going to not make it, dude. Like I was, I was on the fringes. I was about to, I was about to collapse some way or go off on somebody. So there are times that you really have to prioritize your well-being um, and take advantage of the naps. You know, in Italy, people have little siestas and they take naps or they close their shops from three to seven p.m. And so, you know, take advantage of that and. Go with the flow of the society that you're in, I would say. I have a friend who he got to study internationally in the Galapagos, and he really integrated himself with the culture um, and how they worked, and he had a host family. I didn't have a host family. My program, we went to four different cities. I'll get to more of the specifics. I'm sorry if I'm dilly-dallying a little bit, um, but we got to go to four different cities. We went to Rome and then Levanto, and then Siena, and then Florence, all in Italy. Um, and that was a really just beautiful and wonderful experience because for me, it was so, it was like shell shock. You know, there was times that I would look at my friend and I'd be like, is this really happening right now? You know, like we're seeing the Vatican or uh, St. Peter's Basilica or like we're having one of the best meals of our life and you know you just taste it and it's like explosions in your mouth and you're just like <laughs> like baffled I would just be baffled a lot of the time and so it's really cool that you're doing that while you're getting to know somebody and it like catalyzes the bond that you build between each other um, which I just I think it's beautiful and it's awesome to experience that um, so Rome was really cool. It's a bigger city. It's the capital of Italy, I believe. Um, but like, it's like the one of the biggest cities there. Um, you know, obviously there's some pretty big cities and a lot of people visit like Milan, which is Milano and uh, Pisa because they want to see the Leaning Tower of Pisa. But the cities that we went to were crucial and wonderful. So in, in Rome, it was really exhausting and we were going, going, going. And then we like hit the brakes and came into Levanto and Levanto is in the uh, region of Lespasia and the town of Levanto is above, it's north of the Cinque Terre cities, which that is repetitive because Cinque Terre means five cities. So I think you just say the Cinque Terre. So there's five cities and then above it is Levanto and in between each one is there's hiking in between each city and then each one has a beach as well so it's a crazy experience but there aren't really museums and stuff so there we were really soaking in the culture so we went from like going 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 to like we really slowed down and we just had 
class time, we would meet every day for class, which normally we were in a park, just meeting and classes were super awesome. We just discussed. And honestly, I learned so much in the discussion and building a relationship with the culture and the people that I was in the class with and getting to learn more about the perspective of women my age and uh, of Miss Doc and how she perceives the world and how they perceive the world and, you know, all of these different socio-political backgrounds or, you know, their cycle, sci- social psychology, since I took social psychology, I like to talk about it, but um, I got to learn a lot about that and Levanta was probably my favorite. If you were probably like, this surfer guy, of course he likes the beach town. I'm actually from Middle Tennessee. I grew up on a farm, so... Uh, I've only been surfing like once, um, but it was just the best. I do love, deeply love the beach and we got to just hang out on the beach and go to each of the five cities and each of the beaches is different. So Levanto is probably the biggest and least tourist, uh, tourist trodden, uh, Rio Rigamero, which I just call Rio. And I'm probably not saying that name correctly. It's the last of the five cities. It's the furthest South. Um, and they're all on the Mediterranean, but it has like big rocks on its beach and it's, it doesn't have very big beaches. And then the next one up is like, doesn't really have beaches. It just kind of has like, uh, like, like cliffs kind of that you can kind of jump off of. And then the next one up is like more of a bay area, very shallow. Um, I wasn't a giant fan of that beach. And then the next one up was like very touristy, beautiful beach, very packed in. And the water went down deep immediately, but no rocks. And then in uh, in Levanto, it was like very shallow, went out very far, and uh, beautiful, long, wide beach, but totally different from anything I've ever experienced on an East Coast, a Gulf, or a West Coast beach that I've been to. Those are the beaches I've been to. Um, so it's that was just a wonderful time there, and. I got to overlook the city of Levanto or the town of Levanto. It's more of a town. Um, But I got to overlook that and it was wonderful and beautiful. And I got to eat so much good food. Well, I ate more good food in Rome because Levanto and Cinque Terre is more of a tourist place. So, and more of a retiree place. So the prices are a little bit higher and the food was not as astonishingly uh, potent and good. But still, I ate a lot of great stuff and had a lot of really wonderful experiences. One night specifically sticks out to me. Um, so we were just in Levanto for the first like day or so. And then we took a boat that stopped at each of the five cities. And then it left us at the um, at the last one, Rio Rigamero. And then there's a train that goes and it stops at each city. And so we were left there. Um, and then we would take the train back to Levanto when we were ready. So we just got to hang out. We explored all of Rio, which is what I'll refer to Rio Rigamero as, if I'm even pronouncing that right. Um, But it's a very picturesque town. You've probably seen it on postcards or something. Uh, You know, those Mediterranean houses, every one of them, each city that, you know, it's like turquoise and blue and pink and yellow and white buildings, you know, very vibrant. Um, And it's like on these big, you know, basically mountains or cliffs, like it's a very inclined city so there's a lot of up and down um but there was that that we did and we had lunch there and then we swam on the beaches and casey got stung by a jellyfish um and it was totally wonderful and then we went down a city and we were like oh this is pretty cool and we checked it out for a little while and then we ended up getting dinner there or supper there at uh it was like this it wasn't a a bar i mean everything there is kind of a bar everything serves alcohol Um, you know, it seems like they really push that there, but, uh, not so much my vibe, but, um, this place that we stayed, we ate at it. They had some live music and this guy was playing, you know, it's like an Italian guy playing like American music or like, you know, playing like John Lennon, um, or like Led Zeppelin and stuff like that, just on like an acoustic guitar with this buddy beating on a drum. And then we did, you know, more like charcuterie board stuff there. We had like bruschetta and uh, little sandwiches and stuff. So we had some nights you want to go extravagant with your dinners and then some nights you want to go a little cheaper and it doesn't really matter, uh, you know, what you get as long as you're 
um, in a place that's not a tourist trap, you're probably going to have good food. So that place had wonderful food. And I mean, a lot of times when you were eating, it was just like, is this really happening right now? You know, there was live music and uh, it was just a, it was a, that was really a beautiful um, little occasion. We had a little friend group that we were kind of going around while we were in that region of the Spazia going through, you know, Cinque Terre and Levanto, kind of the same, like six of us hung out together and we just had like wonderful food and there was music and we were just dancing a little bit and uh, super great time. And then the next city that we went to, um, I do have to issue out a little warning, you know, uh, definitely wash any any produce that you get because you don't want to get sick. Um, if you want to know more about that, email me or call me. Um, but the next city that we went to was um, Siena. And in between each one of these, so we flew into Rome and then we took a four hour train from Rome to Levanto and then it there was like another 30 minute, like more local train that we took from the big train station into, um, into Levanto. But then we took a, a bus to Siena and we got to stop at this medieval town that had a torture museum. And, uh, me and Casey did not enjoy that because we were not in the best of, um, conditions health wise. We were a little sick. Um, but then Siena, we were there for about six days and it's a Tuscan town, and so there's a lot of leather goods because they're uh, an ancient rival of Florence. And, um, you know, we just got to take that in and eat the food, and they have a lot of really cool historical things. That's where this is from. I met a, a man who he's 16th. His family goes back to the 16th century, and he's the only ceramics guy in Siena who he makes the the ceramic, and then he paints it, and then he uses a oh i forgot what it's called an urn or a the thing that you like you burn it so that all the paint stays on there he's the only one that does the full thing everybody else generally buys theirs and ships them in or whatever but he does it all by hand and all by himself and i got some really cool ceramics there um but sienna was wonderful it's very cobblestony and we got to do some fun like like there was a, a bar that we were, we were walking back from dinner one night after we'd had a really great dinner, um, some great steak. Every everybody over there cooks steak perfectly. If you order it, you know, perfectly medium rare, or rare. They don't do medium rare. It's just it's it doesn't. If you're like, oh, I only do well done or medium rare, like you do this. This steak, you do. Trust me, you do it. Um, that was a little. I think you should leave reference. But um, you know, it was it was awesome. And so we're walking back, and Siena has this famous thing called uh, the Piazza di Campo which is where the campo or the uh, the race happens. There's a, a yearly race on like the 2nd of July and the 16th of August where there's a horse race between some of those contratas. And um, it's really interesting. And I have a Wikipedia page that I'd love to share with you about that if you're interested in it. That was my uh, long-term uh, assignment that I did. And I learned a ton about the contratas and about the Piazza di Campo and um, that race. Um, it's a very historical and wonderful piece of history and culture that they have there. And they do like parades through the streets um, in full attire from like, you know, the 17th century when they were broken into those contratas. Uh, but we were walking back from dinner one night and we heard music and I've been saying since we're on, like, we need to find somewhere to dance because it was, you know, I just, that's my vibe. But um, we heard some music and we went over and there was like a bar that had set up a DJ in like a little alleyway that connected a road to the compo. And um, so like people were just kind of dancing in there. And like we had a big group with us, like more people of uh, uh, from our program funneled in. So we probably had maybe 25 people there and we were all just kind of like moshing and hanging out and doing our thing. Um, and that was a great experience. And then um, the Savetta, which is the Owl District, which was close to where we were staying, was having their um, their like parade and party. So we got to experience that a little bit, and uh, I'll wrap it up because I know this is this is long, but I just love the experience. Please contact me if you have any questions. Florence was amazing. Florence is beautiful. I wish we had had more time there, 
We only had three days in Florence. We had a little too long in Siena, but we got to go to the Uffizi. We got to see Michelangelo's David. We got to go to the top of the Duomo, which if you don't know, the Duomo changed architecture because it's like the biggest dome of its time. Um, but we got to the Duomo, you got to see around the entire city. And the thing that's wonderful about those giant panoramic perspectives that you get to do, we also got to do one in Siena, is you get to overlook the entire city and then you get to see the rolling Tuscan hills um, outside of the city and these, you know, villas that are set up on the hills that also look, overlook the city. And so that's wonderful. And um, I would love to give you some tips about traveling. Uh, if you would message me on Facebook or my Columbia State email is bbain2 at columbiastate.edu. Uh, my personal email is rooster, like the animal, and then burcham, B-U-R-C-H-A-M at gmail.com. And I'd be willing to talk to you and answer any questions you have. Because on the way there, I was not worried about sleeping. And then I got on the plane, only slept about 45 minutes out of an eight-hour flight. On the way back, I had a different tactic. I slept as much as possible. I got more like six hours of sleep on an eight-hour flight. Then watched a movie, worked out perfectly. Um, but it was just such a great experience. I'm so thankful for it. And because of Columbia State and Tensis, I was able to do it without going. I, I, I couldn't have done it without them and their scholarships and their support. And shout out Miss Benz, Miss Lacey Holly Benz, I believe. There are her first two names. And shout out. Uh, Sharon Grigsby, shout out, uh, Wynn Gooch, Heather Bonner, uh, Regina Ray, all the people that helped me get there, you know, Rory Berry, um, oh, shout out, uh, Teresa, uh, in Tensus. She was super helpful. Call people, please call people if you have any questions about this and make it happen. Put in the effort, you know, I put in, it's a couple of, uh, a couple of weeks leading up to it, you know, you got a couple of months kind of of you're putting in effort here and there to to make it happen. But it's a three week process. And I promise you, it feels like much longer than three weeks. You know, after Rome, it felt we'd been in Rome for like five days and it felt like, OK, so we're going home now. And it was like, no. And we had like this. Basically, it felt like a vacation in the middle of our trip when we were in Levanto and so it's so worth it to put in the effort to have this life altering experience. And I so hope that you will use all of your resources to do it because it's a wonderful and truly amazing experience. Um, and I would love to give back and help in whatever manner possible. I didn't hear about this program until I was a sophomore at Columbia State, but I know a, a girl named Ermi who went to uh, Pellissippi State, and she got to go to Italy her freshman and sophomore year. Um, Pellissippi State is a community college, so she got to go to Italy twice. Um, and I know people that went on smaller programs, like my friend Rob. Uh, he got to go to the Galapagos, and his program was only like seven people. So, uh, you know, talk to people who have gone on the program and, you know, try to pay attention about it and keep it in your ears and in your calendars. Uh, and on your email, look out for it and uh, try to do it. And, you know, just, it, you know, keep an open mind, keep an open heart and uh, be willing and, uh, you know, ready for it and just do it, please. Be safe. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that I wasn't too ridiculous or, you know, just whatever. Enjoy your day and be safe. Uh, much love. And thank you, Columbia State, again. And all my people at Columbia State. Y'all are awesome. Keep on rocking it.